When it comes to this tired, repeated narrative of a lone wolf gunman killing people in events that directly shape government policy already being discussed, and we see it happen again and again and again and again and again and again and again since John Wilkes Booth, for Christ's sake, I don't think it's really up to us in the alternative circles to have to prove that the authorities and mainstream media are lying about them anymore. I think at this point it's up to them to prove their claims to us. And so far in this Las Vegas shooting, I've seen nothing to convince me that the official narrative is remotely true, other than the fact that a crowd was fired on and many people were hit and a bunch died. That is true. In fact, even people who refuse to look at the evidence for the claims of past false flag operations are starting to wake up in the aftermath of this Vegas event. And that's because they're finally catching on. This was a very sloppy operation. Very textbook. What people need to realize, and they can easily do so by just looking around with their eyes open, is America is effectively turning into a police state, and that this is by design. And if you think this level of conspiracy couldn't happen, then you're naive to history. This has happened throughout history in many empires. I point to Russia and Germany not too long ago for two really easy examples. In America, predominantly, as of late, every one of these lone wolf attacks or riots um, that have dominated headlines relentlessly for the last few years have happened just as legislation relating to them is being discussed. And they prompt bills being passed which tighten the security on American citizens, slowly lessen their freedoms, and put more power into the hands of intelligence, surveillance, police, military, and defense agencies. We have George Soros funding groups like Antifa and Black Lives Matter and so on. And this is leading to staged riots and serious injuries, even deaths. And then we have Trump giving the police forces billions of dollars worth of tanks, armor, machine guns, grenades, and any other military equipment you can name. So it's both sides, the right and the left. And they're working together towards a common agenda. All the stuff they argue about, the minor issues that you see on TV, is all rhetorical bullshit. They serve the same masters on both sides. And I'll leave you to research this stuff further and in more detail if you'd like. But for now we're going to go over this latest staged slaughter in Las Vegas and the points which should perk up the eyebrows of anyone that's paying attention to what's going on. We'll start with the fact that the lone wolf claims CNN and its counterparts are repeating all day, every day since the bullets were flying is patently false. There were multiple shooters, just as a bunch of the eyewitnesses have claimed, and just as the police scanner audio also confirms from the time the bullets were flying. Confirms there are at least two shooters with fully automatic weapons. And near the end of this video, I'm going to prove there were multiple shooters by showing you a visual of the audio signatures which demonstrate this beyond a shadow of a doubt. But before that, we'll look at some strange connections between the alleged gunman, Stephen C. Paddock, and the defense, intelligence, and security sectors, starting with this. This is a post that was uploaded on the website 4chan on September 10th, which was three weeks prior to the event that unfolded in Vegas. For those unfamiliar with 4chan, it's a message board that allows its users to post anonymously and without a trace. Uh, and because of this, it's been known to be used by liars and whistleblowers alike. But this post, left by a guy just calling himself John, is extremely important. He wrote, Look, I feel bad for some of you on this website, so I'll let you in on a little secret. If you live in Las Vegas or Henderson, stay inside tomorrow. Don't go anywhere where there are large groups of people. Also, if you see three black vans parked next to each other, immediately leave the area. You're welcome. Signed, John. Uh, and then people started saying stuff like, I live in Vegas, what are you saying? Should I leave my home? Arm to the teeth. Um, a bunch of people made fun of John's post, like this one who put a picture of John Podesta and wrote, John? Uh, which I thought was pretty funny. But anyways, John responded a little later and answered a few questions that were posed for him to elaborate. And he said, it's called the High Incident Project. They want to make the American public think that places with extremely high security aren't safe. They are trying to create more regulations. You will see laws proposed within the next few years to put up more metal detectors and other security devices. Media and politicians will be saying places with lots of police need even more police. I can't guarantee anything will happen tomorrow, but Las Vegas is on their minds. Signed, John. And then people really started hounding this guy, so he left one final comment saying, 
If their plan is successful, the state of Nevada will pass a law in the future making all casinos have mandatory metal detectors and backscatter machines. Soon after, a federal law will be passed to put these machines in universities, high schools, federal buildings, you name it. OSI Systems and Chertoff are the main producers of these machines. Sometime around 2020, Chertoff and OSI will merge into a single company. After they merge, the owners will sell off their stock and make billions in profit. Mr. Chertoff has been in contact with Sheldon Adelson. Mr. Adelson will become a huge sponsor of these machines, and he will be the first to put them in his casinos when the law passes. This is my last message for now. Don't expect me to return anytime soon. Signed, once again, John. And that was his last message. And in it, he names a few names, those being Michael Chertoff, who was George W. Bush's Secretary of Homeland Security, the second one in history, uh, and who now heads up the Chertoff Group, which is a risk management and security consulting company that works with the government. And John also named Sheldon Adelson, who basically owns Las Vegas itself, and who met with President Trump directly after the shootings for a meeting that was planned beforehand. It's worth mentioning that both of these men, Adelson and Chertoff, are both dual Israeli citizens and known Zionists. And I'll leave it at that for now and let you do your own research to realize the implications of that. Uh, either way, it's simply astonishing that this John posted this on September 10th, telling all that read it that a staged event was headed to Las Vegas that would threaten the lives of anywhere nearby, and then it happened. Uh, call it a coincidence if you want, but I think this, while circumstantial, is very telling. And the intelligence and security connections only begin there. When we look at the Patsy, or the shooter, Stephen Paddock, we find more connections to these sectors. Uh, first off, Paddock worked his career before a very early retirement in his 30s at the company which preceded Lockheed Martin, which is the largest defense contracting company on planet Earth. You know, enemy number one. Uh, so right away we see this guy as a professional from the exact sector who could pull this event off, the exact sector that would benefit from this event happening, and the exact sector this John guy predicted was going to conduct a violent event to boost the business of that industry three weeks prior to the shooting. And it doesn't end there either. A search on FlightAware.com shows Stephen C. Paddock of Henderson, Nevada, so our reported shooter for sure, used to own a fixed-wing single-engine jet a decade ago, which is now owned by Volant LLC. And a quick search shows who Volant is, another security and defense company serving the Department of Defense and Intelligence community. In fact, one of their main services is providing attack prevention against what just happened in Vegas. And this is where his plane ended up. Also curious was this picture that was circulating within a few hours of the attacks. It was posted by a worker for the Vegas Hotel and Casino Union, and it shows, as is almost always the case with these events, that an active shooter drill was held just over a day before the shooting, which mimicked exactly what took place after it was finished, making sure casino employees knew how to act when the bullets started flying. If anything, it's definitely worth noting. And well, there's a lot more circulating that we could go through, We'll finish here now with the audio analysis of a video taken by a Vegas taxi driver which proves there was more than one shooter that night riddling people with bullets. This is now undeniable. Now while I can't tell you based on the decibels how far the shooters were from the cabbie's dash cam in precise feet and inches, which is unnecessary, I will visually and auditorily prove to you that these shooters were a great distance apart from each other. All you need to understand this fact is common sense. First, we'll take a look at the video for 45 seconds, and then we'll look at my analysis of the audio. Listen closely. Um, there's going to be a steady burst of eight shots fired at close range to the taxi, and then 40 seconds later, more shots will be fired at an extremely long range from the taxi and the first shooter. Take a listen. Automatic gunfire. 
now it sounds like it's coming from um, farther away. So that was the video, and now here's me analyzing the audio, which is something I've been doing for the record for around 20 years now. Pay attention. So here's the audio image of the video we were just uh, watching of the lady's cab with the close range shots and the long range shots. And uh, I'll explain to you exactly what we're looking at. So these huge peaks right here, these are the uh, close range shots. These had to have happened right by her, right over her head, not too far away at least. Um, and you can see that by how loud they are, how high the peaks go. And all of this right here is basically silence. Nothing else happens. She speaks here. Yeah, it does. It sounds like automatic gunfire. That's what those peaks are. Uh, and then more just nothing happening until right around here at the 46 second mark where our next shots are going to happen. And we can tell how quiet these shots are that that's extremely far away from her. That's really long range considering that these are uh, uh, automatic weapons being fired. For it to be that quiet, that's really far in the distance. So we can already tell that between the uh, close range shots and then the um, long range shots, like you can barely hear them, that these are hundreds, uh, dozens if not hundreds of yards apart from each other. I would guess this is uh, someone on very close floors to her, lower floors, maybe the fourth floor as people are saying. I don't know, but it's really close to her. Um, if this is on the 32nd floor and that's how loud they are, she's sitting in the parking lot of Mandalay Bay right underneath, then these would have to be coming from somewhere else altogether, really far away, maybe a different building, uh, who knows. But these shots here and these are extremely far apart. Um, we'll give it one more listen here. Compare that to this. <laughs> They're nowhere near each other. Um, now people have said that that uh, this is just an echo, the next shots that you hear. These are shot and then the sound travels and then you get an echo. But that's not true and we can tell that from looking at this audio as well. First of all, these huge peaks here are right here as well. This is the echo from these shots. Listen. That's the echo. That's the sound bouncing off all the walls around, all the buildings. Um, and what I also did is I, uh, I, I copied this, the quieter shots, and I pasted them right underneath here. So if we zoom in, we can actually compare the signature of the audio and we can see with our eyes that the shots that happen, that's them right here at the 46 second mark, are, uh, are completely different from the ones that happen at, at close range. Now at close range we can see there's eight shots, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's what these peaks are. And they're extremely regular. They're one after the other, no break in them. Now, what I've done is I've, uh, I've turned the volume up on the uh, long range shots because you can barely hear them. So now we'll be able to hear them clearly or clearer, louder at least. So as we can see, there's two shots fired, these peaks here, doo -doo. and then uh, around 11 or 12 or between 10 and 12 other shots right here and a break in between. Doo -doo. It's a completely different signature than the original shots that we heard at close range. So therefore, these aren't an echo at all. They look completely different. An echo is going to look the same, um, just quieter. And as we can see over here in the, uh, in the echo from these shots, they're the same as these. That's how an echo works. And when we compare these two images here, the top and the bottom, which are the shots in the beginning and then the shots at the 46 second mark, we see they're not the same at all. These are, these start at the same place, 
these end here, and then these ones carry on. There's more shots. So, that proves it. There is multiple shooters. Absolutely no doubt about it. There is no sound in between these shots and then the shots at the 46 second mark, which means that the 46 second mark, these cannot be an echo because there's no other shots. It's definitely not an echo of this. We just saw the images don't add up together. So these are just shots from very far away compared to where these shots are. Not around the corner, not, not uh, eight windows apart like we keep seeing in the pictures of Mandalay Bay in the news. These shots are much, much further away than these are from the person who recorded them. That means there's multiple shooters. Now we could have went through the entire video like that and analyzed all the audio, uh, which I did, and I'm pretty sure that there was more than two shooters uh, based upon that. Um, and it would only prove the point further, but in the interest of time, I just selected the first 50 seconds, which is all we needed. Without a doubt, those shots are being fired from two separate locations very far apart from each other, and in no way is it possible for the quieter shots to be the echo of the first shots. They're, they're completely different from each other. So this confirms without a shadow of a doubt that there were at least two shooters, and I would bet there were even more than that. Um, so the lone wolf bullshit story that they tell us every time right out the window. And I'll leave you with that for now. Uh, it's now the mainstream media's turn to show us some evidence